right, you may recall a little while back I brought a ZD915 uh, desoldering station and I've been using it now for three months um, and today I had my first problem, when I go like this and press the trigger it's not sucking up any solder I can see the end of the nozzle is clogged but there's also a lot of solder inside here so I thought today I would have a look at taking this part and cleaning it out and then to try and declog the nozzle I'm going to put it on its maximum temperature and then use these little um, probes that came with it to see if I can clear it out but as it's not sucking I thought I'd better just check the state of the filter that's in the end here and what it's like inside the gun okay so from what I can see to get inside there's a little button on the end here that you flick down and when it does that this part of the handle comes back and then the tube inside is pretty tight so somehow I've got to get that out of here without breaking it and there's a spring in there as well um, yeah this is going to be a bit a bit tight um, Jesus, this doesn't seem to go back far enough on the spring. Because what you've got, you've got the gap here where you've got to try and pull this up. And then you've got this bit here which I'm assuming pushes into like a recess. But how this comes out, I... So it is a case of just pulling that back and then just levering it out. There is a little nodule here on the end. You have to be a bit careful you don't bend that. However, what I've noticed when I've got it out is that end is full. Oh, I've just tipped solder everywhere. Solder is jam solid. Um, so I might have to get some pliers to try and pull this out. There it is. That is what was jammed in the end. So. No wonder this thing was not um, sucking any solder through. There's another lump here as well. But I can't... Yeah, it's jam solid. Absolutely jam solid. Um, that's freed it. Right, let me just tip this in the bin. Um, I need to find a piece of paper or something to uh, put all this on because it's just making mess everywhere. Hang on a minute. Right, let's take take the spring out. God. Right. Well, that's clear now, all the way through. So my blockage was here, that's why it couldn't suck, because it couldn't get anything to come through. Um, so I'm just going to run a screwdriver around the edge here, just chip off all of these. Uh, it's a Phillips screwdriver, just a round one, and it just seems to be enough to uh, rub the plastic and uh, get the solder off. I haven't cleaned this since I've had it, so... This is three months worth of grime inside here. Um, now I had seen videos on the internet where they said you couldn't uh, you couldn't clean the inside of this, but that's coming off really well. Nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah. Right. Anyway, let me get cleaning, so you don't want to see this bit and I'll be back in a minute. So just using a bit of furniture polish and a duster and a little screwdriver to push the thing round and just go round like that inside the glass housing. Here's the glass housing. That's as good as the day I got it. So that's cleaned up really nicely. So yep, happy with that. Right, so the next thing we will do now is we will try and give the spring um, a bit of a clean. See what we can do on that. Um, I think it's just a case of just picking the solder off. 
Um, so let's have a look at this. Cool. Yeah, it, that's all it is, is the, the spring there. That's the lump's gone now. I've moved it. So that's pretty much the lump of solder gone. So again, just giving the little spring a bit of a rub with the uh, Phillips, tiny little Phillips screwdriver I've got. The solder's just falling off, so it's not attaching to anything on here. Um, so that's pretty clean now. Okay, the next thing we've got is this filter. Um, I mean, it's only cotton. Um, I don't know whether you can clean this or whether you're supposed to use a, a new one, but the solder's brushing off around the sides, so that's your filter itself. Doesn't look too bad. Some bits here. Um, seem to be cleaning off all right. Quite tempted to put that back in to be honest with you. Um, my bulk of it looks alright. So I think we'll put that back in, it's still quite thick. Um, I don't think there's any other bits. Oh hang on, or have I broken the spring? No, it doesn't look, I don't know whether that's just gone to the shape of the spring. Oh yeah, it has. It's just, it's just adopted the shape of the spring. It looked like part of the spring was still inside it. But it's not. It's just where it's been in contact with the spring. Okay, so, after three months of use, that's the amount of rubbish we got out. I'll take a picture for you as well. You can have a look at close-up now. So there you can see, that's the extent of what we've got within a three month period. So always when you go in here, I would suggest giving it a good clean. And uh, we have got a few bits that are sort of laying about inside the gun. So I'm gonna give that a bit of uh, a clean as well, just to make sure everything's okay inside. And then we'll go from there. Um, I don't know whether you can, if I undo this, No. See that pipe from there running through there is blocked as well. So let's put one of these pipe cleaner things up there. Let's see if we can get that out. No. Block solid. Um, What's the tip like? Yeah, tip's blocked solid as well. So this is blocked. And on the gun, this is blocked all the way up to here as well. So we're going to have to clear that. But to, um, to get that nozzle off, this tube, let me just... Uh, do the reassembly. Okay, so I hope you can see this. Let me just re-angle the camera. Okay, so to get the tube, to get this nozzle off the end, you undo this knurled ring here, slide this tube off, then the tip just pulls off, and then you've got an outer sleeve that comes off as well. And that's the three bits that you end up with and that's what you're left with. So I now need to try and unblock this and the only way I can do that is by turning it on and heating it up. So I'm gonna to have to put the glass canister back in and then I'll have to whack the temperature up to maximum 
and see whether we can clear this and get it molten enough that I can then push it all through and suck it in and hopefully we won't block up again. This apparent um, sort of tabbed on the edge of the filter was bothering me and I thought I was losing a part and I was. There was this, I found it in the pile of solder. If you look at the um, instructions for this, what it shows you is you've got the filter in the middle here and the aluminium here goes in the glass so that pushes on the end of the spring then you have the filter behind so it's important that I didn't miss that um, otherwise we wouldn't have got it back together properly but the good thing is I've got it now right let me get on trying to assemble this so I managed to get it back together we've got it all in there as you can see from the photos I'm just putting up now um, that little uh, cross shaped piece of metal is quite important but Jesus that was hard to get back in but we've done it you have to um, force this in while pulling this back with your fingers round the piece of the insert in here and then it's on a spring and goes back but you really have to force that to put it in so longer term I'm going to get another one of these because I can see me breaking that at one point but it's certainly tight now comes the next challenge we've got to unblock this tube running right up the end here so we're going to put all of uh, this stuff back on don't forget the nozzle and I'm going to set this to its maximum temperature and let it absolutely go thermonuclear and then we'll see if we can unblock the tube and because I've cleaned all this in here now we should see it suck everything in if it's coming in so let me get this on to temperature and we'll see what we can get up to I normally run at 380 but I'm going to maximum okay it's maxed out at four, 480 degrees celsius I don't know what that is in fahrenheit 896 fahrenheit so we'll let that warm up because it's only at 85, 89 so it's still warming up and then we'll see how warm this gun gets and uh, whether we can unblock it Right, we're ready to go. I've got to be careful here because um, I could end up burning my hands off with this. So I've let it go for a while. Let's see if we can uh, get it unblocked. Well, that's not going up there. Ah, hang on. Yes. That is now unblocked. And you can see the tube coming through there so let me go slightly bigger let's see if we can get the largest one up there which isn't going in well the big one's sort of going in It's not. Just keep screwing it in the hope that it frees it up. Oh, hang on, we had some movement then. If I can get this all the way up the tube into the little chamber. That's got it. There we go. Ah. There was a massive lump of solder just went straight up there into the tube. That's lovely and unblocked now. There. Let me turn this off. Set it down again. Right, <laughs> you're going to think that I actually touched the soldering iron. I didn't. I caught the side of my hand on one of those metal rods that had just been up inside the tube. Luckily, I haven't burnt myself too bad, but Jesus, that was hot. But uh, anyway, 
I will now flash up on the screen a picture of what we've just got out the gun. So the gun now is completely clear. So I can't really complain um, about the gun itself. I mean, I've been using it for three months and, you know, it does build up solder in there. You are sucking it. It's just got clogged. I've cleaned it. It's come up perfectly clean. And it's all working again. So great. We're up and running. So still recommend this. And I'll tell you what, when you are desoldering, it is a great little device. So I would highly recommend it to anyone, especially for the price. It's the best thing I've ever had. I mean, I used to use solder braid and one of the conventional desoldering pumps and they are they're just pants compared to this so get yourself one i'm not affiliated with them but it's the best thing i've ever brought